All right, everybody, welcome to the studio this evening. And I guess for me, what is feels like anyway is welcome to the start of fall. I know it's, it's a little late. Uh, this is the first time I've had a long sleeve shirt on in a long time. And uh, just getting ready for some uh, Halloween uh, festivities coming up. So I thought we would paint a bat to get started with that. Let's flip down to my table. Here's my my reference draw or my drawing that I've done of my reference photo, which is over there. You can see it just kind of quickly sketched uh, this guy out. Let me put up on here. There we go. Let me start streaming my palette colors. Jacqueline is here. Welcome, Jacqueline. Good evening. I know that Natalie's here and Lumen's here. Carrie's here. We're talking a little bit. Uh, before the stream started. Um, as always, if you guys have any questions, throw them out there. I love answering questions. I'm just going to kind of jump right in with this guy. And I'm going to grab one of my brushes here. Not too big of a one. Uh, uh, this time, as, as has been my custom for a while, I'm using my King Art paint brushes. And I'm going to grab... Just a little bit of Payne's gray. Mix a little bit of this color. And we're gonna we're gonna do some other stuff with this color in just a I mean a little bit here, but I want to get a base color down on this guy's uh, wings. And that base color that I want to use is this Payne's gray. It's a wonderful color cool gray color and it allows just allows for a lot of other colors to be mixed on top of it it should just kind of maintain some of that cool uh, color oh, or hopefully it will I don't know we're gonna add some other colors to this this is just going to be our first layer now I will admit to you this evening that I'm not exactly sure what uh, what paper I'm using this evening and the reason is that I moved some stuff around in my studio and um, I found as a small stash of paper a, a little hidey hole of paper and it is unlabeled, um, but it seems like pretty high quality paper. So um, I, I'm not exactly sure. It feels like it could be Arches paper, and but it also could be, I do have some uh, Fabriano some high quality Fabriano paper. It's definitely a higher quality. It's definitely cotton paper. Has a totally different feel than a lot of the the uh, other papers that I've been using recently. Um, but it could be Fabriano Artistico, something like that, paper. Or it could be Arches paper. It is a non-standard size, of course. There we go. Okay, now while I've got this whole thing wet, what I want to do is I want to come back in. A little mix of uh, Pyrol Red, a little bit of this uh, Quinacridone Rose. And I just want to drop on, I know there are some areas here where there's going to be some joints Right, right down here. Right, his elbows, his shoulders. There's going to be a couple of little areas here that I want to kind of highlight and make sure that um, they get represented with just a little bit of a of a, a bit of a red, like like kind of like his um, I don't know, like like his skin is coming through a little bit, and then and I'm going to let that sit and dry and while I do that I'm gonna paint the stick that I have up here um, as always 
or as usual, my the paints I have on my on my desk here are my M Graham paints. For anybody to ask, everybody who's here, I think has has seen them for quite a while, and uh, the colors. Well, the colors they're scrolling right down there. Starts up in the corner in the right hand, or I'm sorry, upper left hand corner over here with some uh, turquoise, and then you can see them scroll all the way past, and they go from left to right, all the way around my palette until they end over on the other side, way over in the lower right hand corner down here with um, with yellow ochre. So that's those. I'm encouraging people to ask questions. Uh, who asked earlier? Natalie, was that you that asked, is there a challenge in Discord for October? There will be. I haven't gotten it up there yet. I promise I'll get it up there soon. I just haven't. I was going to do, actually, I missed a couple of days in there. and This is the third, and I could have done it on the the first or the second i realized that been a little tired yesterday i came home from work and i just kind of laid down and crashed i really should have done it yesterday but I, I didn't so i apologize for that it will be up there very soon i'm just putting a just some colors on this branch to make it look branch ish Uh, any suggestions on how to lay out a 24 well round porcelain palette? Been stuck this week on how to set it up. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. I have plenty of uh, of ideas on how you would do that. I'm happy to share them with you. I I tried to do it with this somewhat. Um, but it didn't exactly work out, and that's okay. But I would set it up to mimic the color wheel. That's how I would do it. Um, pick where you want to start. You want to start yellow at the top. You want to start red at the top. You want to start uh, blue at the top. doesn't matter. And I would put... I would either alternate... Uh, let's see cold warm cold warm cold warm cold warm all the way around boom, 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 like that or i would put um, my most neutral blue in the center the most neutral one you can get and colder ones to the left warmer ones to the right then you're done with your blues at the top you move on to your greens colder ones on the left warmer ones on the right uh, like a cool over wheel. Yes, exactly like that. That's exactly how I would set that up. Just exactly. That's that's the name of the the color wheel that I was. I've been looking for my uh, printout of that. Oh, I have this totally off off center here. Uh, it's the cool over wheel, and I can't find my copy of it. But yes, that's exactly how I would set it up. I've done, you know, I've tried to do something similar here, right? Blues, blues, greens, yellows, reds, purples, right? You know, take the neutrals out. <laughs> Oops, maybe I should do it this way, right? Take my neutrals out. Blues, greens, yellows, red, purple. And I just go right around like that. But I, I did put some neutrals in there. I think it's a fantastic way, and if you have a true um, circle, then you can always grab opposites and mix mix a, a nice neutral uh, gray pretty easily. So that's how I would do that. All right, this is pretty good paper, and I've, I just painted a little brown. You saw you saw me paint this branch here. I'm not going to do anything more to it. I don't think I'll need to. Well, I mean, I guess I could darken this side a little bit. Maybe it needs to be a little bit darker. Give me some... I can darken that up a little bit. Some sepia and whatever blue is on my... 
Now, here we can do this all in one go around. This paper, I know, will stay wet and stay really nice for me for quite a while. There we go. Ooh, that's a good looking branch. <laughs> that is a good looking branch. Well, I do have some happy news to report to everybody. If if everybody remembers uh, my <laughs> my mentioning that I'm painting these mashups of everything, I've sold one of my mashups already. I'm so excited about it. Uh, I'm so happy it is going to a good home too. That that is more important uh, to me than making any money off of it. Is that it's going to a nice home, somebody who's going to appreciate it. Uh, that's always good. So I'm going to ask a question. Now that I'm starting on Halloween, I'm thinking Halloween stuff. Is anybody doing anything for Halloween? Awesome. Which one? <laughs> Natalie, which one? It was my chicken saurus. <laughs> I love my chicken saurus. I think it is a hoot. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that somebody else appreciates this too. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Jacqueline. Took you uh, over a month with a rectangular one. This new palette is for all the Daniel Smith paints. Uh, the other one was M. Graham. Yeah, it's it's tricky. Even this one, I if I were to do this again, I've got another one of these palettes I could use. I might set them up straight across if you can kind of do that. I'm not sure you can really on a rectangular one. They're kind of cross like this. I don't know. I've gone back and forth a lot of times on on how to set these things up, but that's how that's the basic principle that I tried here. Uh, and if I had a round palette, I would totally be doing that with a round palette. Okay, so as this is drying, I think this is getting nice and dry. You look to my reference photo, you can see. I hope you can see that that little guy has some nice brown hair uh, on his face and on his head here, uh, but it's really dark there. I don't want it to be that dark. I love that brownish, reddish uh, hair color that he has, but it's really too dark on there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna change mine and. Uh, my little bat here is going to get some a little bit of lighter color, and that's okay. And I'm kind of hoping that this is just dry enough that we can hold that edge. I'm sure we'll be back here anyways. But that's so dark that when I when I'm when I'm going to go to paint his nose on here, uh, that if it's so dark I'm not sure that his black nose is going to show up on here so and I don't want him to look like he's totally in the shade or in the dark or whatever we want to call it um, in fact I might even lighten this with a little bit of orange here let me give a little bit of orange in here I want him to have a nice pop of color through here I'm sure we'll come through and alter this color a little bit that's okay The good thing is, is I'm not trying to duplicate that, <laughs> right? I'm not trying to duplicate that reference photo. I'm trying to use that as a reference, just a nice tool to look at. And that's all, really. Let's see, I can let it get darker up here, I think. Up oh, where his shoulder is, inside there. We'll come, well, let's put a little bit of blue in there. Let's darken this up a little bit. This will gray that up a little bit in there. If anybody can see what I'm doing, I, I always, unless I'm painting something really large, I look up <laughs> at, the, at the screen up there and it always looks so small. I'm like, can, can anybody see that? I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I mean, I'm expecting you came to be watching the... The painting, he didn't come to listen to me uh, ramble on for an hour about whatever I have going on. 
but I'm willing to. <laughs> glaze. Let's see. Glaze. Glaze. Jacqueline, glaze. What are we talking about with glaze? We're glazing over top of this. We will be. We will be glazing over the top of this at some point. I've been, uh, let's see, what can we talk about? I've been, <laughs> you, all, you all know that last, uh, what was it, two weeks ago? Oh, yeah, gla glaze over the top. Yeah, we, we're going to be glazing over the top of it for sure. Was it two weeks ago when my, my channel got hacked? <laughs> I didn't know. I had no idea what was going on. Um... I want to paint in his ears. Yeah, I'm just going to paint right in his ears here, too. I've been watching my numbers since that happened. It's the strangest thing. Now, maybe I use YouTube a little differently than other people, and that is entirely possible. But it's been weird that... Um, Normally, my channel grows by about, oh, I don't know, 100 subscribers a month. And I get quite a few uh, people watching my videos. The weird thing is that since that happened, I've been losing people like crazy. And I can't find out if there's something um, that's out there that I haven't done. I haven't changed back or, or some such thing as that. I don't think there's really anything out there. Okay, so um, I'm feeling this. This is nice and dry now. So we're going to go back over our Payne's Gray. This is basically Payne's Gray. And we're going to start layering on some color. And I can use, I could use black if I wanted to. I'm going to use a combination of sepia and neutral tint to do this with. How did you prepare your plastic palette for watercolor paints? Um, let's see. <laughs> let's see. I took it out of the package and I put my paints in there. That's not really the best way to do it. <laughs> That's how I did it. That's not really the best way to do it. Uh, the best way to do it is probably to rough up the surface somehow. I did go through quite a, a bit of time where everything just kind of bubbled up and, and rolled around on the palette and it was it was uh, it was challenging to say the least for a little bit. Uh, I get, you, what you can do is you can get some like uh, 400 grit sandpaper or something along those lines and just give a little scratch. You don't need to make huge indents on there. You don't need to take up, um, you know, you're not, you're not sanding, uh, uh, rough sanding some furniture or anything like that, but probably if you just roughed up the surface a little bit to give the water something to hold on to so it doesn't bead and, and run so much is probably really all you need to do. I've actually, I, I would say I actually have one that is very lightly sanded. Uh, I sanded it, and then I proceeded to uh, never have used it. <laughs> but I, I typically use now um, these metal um, palettes. I don't, I haven't used on a on a large term basis. Anyways, I haven't used a plastic palette in in quite a long time uh, even the little tiny travel palettes that I use are are typically metal enameled metal at this point uh, I bet a magic eraser would rough it enough uh, very well it could very likely it could do that magic eraser just takes that little bit off you really you don't need much you just need to take that little bit of 
um, the surface, that really shiny little bit off of the top of it. Uh, that's really all you need to take off of there. Just to give that water something to hold on to. That would be an interesting experiment. I've got a one. We could we could do that one night. That'd be kind of fun. To take a take a new palette and see how it reacts relative to uh, one that's been used or scuffed up. For me, it didn't take carry. It didn't take long for mine to wear in. I I will admit it. It took not long at all. And, and mine wore in just by taking, I've always got a little paper towel here, and if I clean it off, I just give it a little scrub. And um, usually that does uh, quite a bit to, to help um, rough it up a little bit. It, it really doesn't take that much to do it. Let's see. Uh, I'm not going to paint down there quite yet. Let's see, this, this guy goes this way, and all I'm going to be doing here for the short amount of time is looking at this guy and, and um, putting on a couple of layers of paint, a couple of layers of paint, right? Uh, I, want to, I want to get in the webbing on his wings, and then I'll go back and I'll look to see if I need to add any on, on his arms or his bones in here. And then we'll go back and we'll uh, re really darken those areas that we really need to darken. Let's see. Uh, I had purchased several to give to my grandkids. I have to try this on their palettes. <laughs> Natalie, thank you. Oh, yeah. Nat Natalie. Natalie's. Natalie's got all the information, <laughs> which is fine with me. Let's see, there we go. Let's get a little bit more of this color in here. And there's this little dark area right in here. I, I will admit to being pretty bad about um, dealing with my watercolors. If you've seen any of my paintbrush, like uh, my initial testing of paintbrushes, um, lots of times people get upset with me because I take them, I take them out of the, the wrapper and I'll put them in some warm water and I'll, I'll very lightly I'll just like roll the bristles in my hand to break that gelatin up a little bit. Oh, People get upset. Oh, you shouldn't do that. You should let the gelatin melt. And this, you know, and whatnot. And uh, yeah, probably I should. I'm not saying that I shouldn't. But I always think that, well, shoot, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be using that brush for years to come. And it's going to get more abuse than my fingers on it <laughs> from time to time. If it can't withstand a little bit of, of that kind of abuse, um, maybe I didn't buy the right brushes. But I do understand the sentiment. Let's see. Just trying to see where I need to put some color. And if I don't get the color exactly right on here, that's fine. This is mostly sepia. I haven't done anything with his legs up here yet. But you can start to see leaving a little lighter area here and getting a little darker area in a couple of areas. You can start to get some form on him, on this guy. Um, Jacqueline, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, Natalie, I tell my grandkids' parents that I'm the fairy art supply grandma. <laughs> they need art supplies. You be happy to shop for them. That's funny. That's really funny. <laughs> the fairy art supply grandma. I see magic erase to reclaim the white of the paper. 
I've tried that. I've seen other people do it. <clears throat> and Jacqueline, you do that. I I've tried it to varying success. Sometimes, uh, sometimes it works out really well. Sometimes it's not so well. Do you have any tips on how to make sure that uh, the Magic Eraser is going to work out uh, properly when you erase? I mean, I have one, um, <laughs> which I'm happy to, to say I found for all the wrong reasons, and that is uh, don't don't wet your paper first. <laughs> you, you don't really want wet paper when you're doing that. The wet paper tends to tends to just spread around any color that you're trying to erase off of there. Really makes it not uh, not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, Jacqueline, your guest room is loaded with art supplies. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, right, Jacqueline, the paper needs to be bone dry. Uh, I found that out the hard way. I have, let's see, I have, look, I've got it here. Boom. Here's my, my little magic eraser that I use here. If ever I have little problems, with which I always have little problems. Always have little problems. Little problems happen, that's okay. Um, a cut out stencil or a ruler. Oh, you, um, Jacqueline, you're saying that will help you get a straighter edge use a, a stencil or a ruler as you're trying to as you're trying to do this that I totally can believe now I'm gonna go a little bit darker over here and I'm hoping that I can go a little bit bluer too I can add back in just a little bit of my Payne's gray over here and I'm hoping that this is going to uh, push this back Shoo, just a little bit. Yes, Jacqueline says yes. Again, another <laughs> another lesson I learned the hard way. There we go. Look, all of a sudden, we've got that hard edge. Right here, it's a bit lighter. We still might need to go a bit darker with this right here, but it totally looks like it's in front of all of this stuff here. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna allow this to be darker all the way out to here. Totally looks like oh the Come on, come on. It's not about always doing it right the first time. It's about knowing how to fix it. You know what I think? I think really, I made his bones way too wide when I drew them in here or maybe I didn't paint them in quite right so I'm gonna try to thin these down a little bit I like the way they look there we go look at that that is totally this this wing is totally in front of that one I like the way these look with that little bit of pink in there look how that shoulder that looks like uh, there's like a little bone sitting inside there. All these little joints have just that little bit of pink there. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to leave this because I want a kind of a hard line right here. And then I'm going to let, I'm going to do this whole piece as one down here. And what's dry. This is, this is all pretty wet right now still. 
So I think what I'm going to do, you know, I was going to, I was going to grab a cup and mix some background color, but maybe we won't need that. I think what we're going to do is let's do this. Watch this. Let's go back to my, my color for his fur here. A lot of this is um, burnt umber. Go in his little ear here. And maybe with a little bit smaller brush, I'm going to leave a little line on the outside here. And blend that kind of across a little bit. And that should hopefully make a little cove in his ear. To make it look as though... He's got some hairs that come up here too on, into that ear. There we go. Should make it look like um, his ear has some shape to it. Look at that. Easy as that. Uh, let me pick that up for you. There you go. Look. It looks like his ear's got some shape and the, the hairs are just sticking right over top of it. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on this ear here. And let's let's go on the same side. I don't know why we're oh I'm doing this side. I'll go on this side again. There we go. Uh, Carrie says your paper needs to be dry and your magic eraser just damp and then gently wipe your mistakes off. It's always worked for you. Always worked for you. All I know is that when I try it, <laughs> I get terrible results. No, I used to always get terrible results, and they're not quite so bad. I use it uh, for highlights on water and something interesting. I watched, uh, this was years ago, and I found it one time, and I thought I had bookmarked it. Because it was really a fascinating uh, video. I watched a guy make sunbeams by using a spray bottle. He painted his painting, and then he would get a spray bottle and go across and go psh, 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 and spray, and that, that spray would just take a stream off, and then he'd kind of damp it just a little bit with paper. I was like, well, I'm glad you can do that. I'm not quite brave enough to do that. But the results that he got were really pretty stunning. Damp eraser is correct. Like, damp eraser. Maybe that was my problem to start with. My eraser wasn't. Paper dry, eraser damp. That's the formula. Paper dry, eraser damp. Can't be too hard to remember, can it? Look, there we go, and now we can see. Now we've got his face kind of outlined here. Uh, electric erasers. Oh, electric erasers. Electric, those are the ones who just spin real fast, right? That's what the electric erasers do. They spin. In a circle. But does, does, doesn't does the electric eraser um, tear up the paper? I would think it would tear up the paper a little bit. Or does it not? That one I don't know anything about. That one I have not tried. I've not tried an electric eraser. I'll be honest. So I'm reliant on you guys, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't tear up the it doesn't tear up the paper at all. Bicycle repairman is here. Hello, welcome. I should say, Carrie Carrie sent a message before uh, before this stream started. <laughs> no, they don't. They're gentle. Interesting. They're, they spin so fast, though, I would have thought that they would have just 
you know, eaten like a hole right through the paper. Interesting. Carrie, uh, Carrie jumped on here a little bit before the stream actually started and said hello. So I said hello back. It was being nice. Um, and uh, just I told her I, I was I was playing ukulele. It's a way to relax before I started the stream, which is which is what I do. Uh, but I was playing it over on Discord. In uh, in the pre-stream channel, all by myself, all by myself. No, nobody wanted to come and join me. <clears throat> it's okay. I'm not that good. <laughs> I'm not really that good. I have fun with it. I enjoy it. I'm not really that good. It actually was quite nice. It turned into a nice practice session for me. Sometimes I don't get to um, practice quite as much as I would want. A square repair man. Is this a fruit bat from Australia? They are huge. Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I would suspect it's a fruit bat from somewhere. It it has the look of a fruit bat to me. And I do know that they get quite large, but I just did a search on uh, Pixabay, I think, for this image uh, of a bat or a hanging bat or some, some such search as that. And this is what I got out. He does look big. Fruit bats are big. There we go. Look. Ooh, yeah. So this really dark back here, really, I mean, as soon as I put that on, look, it made this that's much lighter in front just pop right out. It still looks, it doesn't look black. It looks gray, but it looks believable as a wing, even though it's so much lighter than the one back there. We're going to kind of uh, even these out a little bit, but but look how this this whole thing back here Looks like it's pushed way back behind this wing. I love when stuff like that happens. Let's see. Uh, I almost popped into Discord. Uh, but husband is watching Mamma Mia full volume. <laughs> is he distracting? <laughs> he was he was singing along. Good. Uh, you should have you should have tuned in. I could have picked up an ABBA song. Uh, maybe we could have all sung along together. <laughs> From a distance, they look like leaves until you get closer, and it's just a whole bunch of bats. Oh, I have to say, uh, one of the, you need to do a nighttime scene. Oh, I don't know if I've ever done a nighttime scene. I don't know if I have. Um, what I was going to say was, um, back to bats. I grew up in the Midwest, and I grew up in a in a big uh, farmhouse on a farm, right? And uh, one of the things that I used to love about summertime was uh, out of the second story, out of the hayloft of our barn, the bats would come out. As soon as it got to be dusk, you could see them just one after another, pum, 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 flying out of the barn. You could sit there for an hour and just watch the bats fly out, choo, 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 one after another. It was one of the neatest things about growing up there. I will always remember that. And now, even now, that I'm mostly grown up, um, I will walk outside at night. Be <clears throat> well, not not tonight, but uh, yesterday, about this time. Uh, well, maybe half an hour ago from now, from then. Okay. Uh, let's say at quarter after eight or so. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Uh, I was walking around outside. Uh, trying to check for bats flying around because they're just so cool. They're such neat animals, and their their flight pattern is so interesting. 
It's just, I don't, I'm, I'm always shocked that you can fly without feathers. And they're really good at it. <laughs> Michelle is here. Hey, welcome. Let's see, bats are cool. Carrie, you're saying the fruit bats. Is this what you're saying? The, the bats are, uh, the bats are, are very gentle. <laughs> They uh, we used to have them in our lake camp. They eat tons of they do eat tons of mosquitoes. Uh, tons, tons of mosquitoes. They eat their weight in mosquitoes every every day, something like that. Okay, I know that doesn't say much because they're tiny and they don't weigh much of anything. I I understand that, but still. But still, they eat. They they just chew on, chew through all of the mosquitoes. I know I don't normally paint eyes on until the end. Uh, I'm kind of waiting for this to dry up, and I've just done these black. I'm gonna go over them with some red uh, on the next go round. I'm hoping that's gonna give them kind of a interesting little look. And if that doesn't, uh, I might get my shimmer paints and put some shimmer paint on those eyes. I think that would be kind of cool. So, uh, let's see. I'm waiting for this area to dry, the fur underneath, so I can put some fur on his head here. And uh, I think these areas are dry enough. We can go ahead and put some color on over here now. Go ahead and try this. And while I'm doing this, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'm going to try to be super mindful of the width of all of these bones here. And I'm going to try to shrink them down just a little bit. They're, they're a little thick, I think, for bat bones. I know it's how I drew it, but mm. uh, Michelle, you did a bat similar to this in charcoal. How did that turn out? Did it turn out good? I hope so. Bats are so neat. Um, charcoal. I think I've only ever done like one charcoal drawing. That's probably a bad thing to admit to, but <clears throat> I think <laughs> I know I used to have all kinds of charcoal sticks. I think really what happened was I, I can tell you I'm almost certain why I haven't done more is because uh, I started doing some charcoal drawing, and because charcoal is so messy. I'm sure it got everywhere, and it probably, I'm just guessing, probably didn't make my wife real happy. <laughs> she probably asked me to continue uh, my charcoal drawing uh, outside, which probably promptly put an end to my doing charcoal drawings. <laughs> Whoops. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Who knew they made such a mess? I do know that you have to have to do some fixing step. Not fix because it's broken, but fix because you need to uh, affix the uh, charcoal to the page. Uh, um, after you're done, but in the meantime, holy cow. Okay, cool. So I darkened this up. I'm going to move it so you can see it a little better. I darkened this up, and this is going to lighten a little bit as it dries, but I left that light patch right next to the dark here. This light next to the dark so that we definitely keep that, uh, that look of one in front of the other. Let's see. Jacqueline, you need to use a fixative. Right. I uh, 17 the last time I did. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, Carrie, and Carrie, you haven't used an electric eraser. I haven't either. I don't even, I don't even have an electric eraser. I'm not sure how many erasers I have, to tell you the truth. I might not have that many erasers, period. I'm not always known for erasing a lot. I'm more known for just drawing right over top. Let's see. Let's see again. As I'm as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm trying to give extra thought to keeping these this bone structure thin. If I can thin that down a little bit, I can thin it a little bit on each side and correct my drawing. I think that'll get it right there. That should get us something that's nice and dark on the back side back there. Maybe a little bit more color in here. There we go. Yes. Well, I don't think this will be my most colorful painting of all time. But it does look cool. It does look like a, uh, a, like a bat. It looks like he's hanging here. I love the way his, the, his wings are here. And it, it's, it's got this light spot. Maybe it's got a little extra water there. Maybe he, um, you know, uh, I don't know. <laughs> There's some light hitting off of this right there. I don't know what I was trying to say. Uh, I was fairly happy with it, yes. Uh, uh, happy with it, yeah, Michelle, yes. But uh, charcoal can be quite messy. Charcoal can be very messy. <laughs> you got to be on your toes to deal with the mess from the charcoal. Like I said, that is not that is not a medium for me. You can only make such a mess in watercolors. And that and any mess that I make in watercolors is usually pretty easy to clean up. So I think I've probably found my medium. <laughs> probably. All right. All right. Look. So um, I'm happy to leave this guy. on a white background, but I'm not sure that I should. But I can't, in good conscience, put them on a dark background. Ooh, I love the way these wings look. Oh, I think that looks fantastic. So what do you guys think? Should I put a background on here, just a simple wash on here? Would this make him look a little bit better? Part of me says, yes, it definitely would. Part of me says, mm, I don't know if you should do that. You could potentially um, mess with everything else, and you might not want to do that. But what do you guys think? See, I'm going to try to leave a little bit of a lighter spot right in the middle of this. Not his full wing, really. But this part of his wing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michelle, you love the look of his wings. Thank you. I knew I was going to like painting this guy because... I love doing these graded washes like that. Again, I don't, this isn't the most colorful graded wash, but I love doing graded washes like this. Oh, I almost put him the wrong way around. He was almost... I still want to know how these guys hang upside down all the time. If I hung upside down for eight hours a day, I'd be dead. <laughs> I could... 
my heart couldn't pump all that the blood up to my feet. It's just pool in my head, and my head will explode. I don't know how these guys can do it. Let's see. No background. Jacqueline, you're saying no background. You like the white. Uh, Carrie, you've got an electric eraser, but it was saying... Oh, you're, oh, I see. Carrie, you've got, ha, uh, you've got an electric eraser. The electric racer is gentle. The bats aren't necessarily gentle. But you're not saying the bats are cruel or anything. <laughs> They're just not as gentle as an eraser. Uh, the water, you love water-soluble graphite. What is water soluble graphite? That's not regular graphite. There's a different sort of water soluble. Let's see, I'm going to drop in a few lines here and there. All right, if this is a if this is a joint of some sort Probably a few lines around it like that. Derwent made... Oh, Derwent made you... Derwent makes lots of stuff like that. They do. Let's see. We need to... We need to address this up here. His feet are uh, brown. But not super dark. They're, they're definitely a different color than... Then um, his wings. So I'm going to use a mix of burnt umber and sepia. And I'm going to, I'm actually going to. Only do about that much of it, and then I'm going to let the water do the rest in inside that little pocket here, right? right? Inside that little pocket. Watch this. Let's see if we can do this. I'm hoping this will pull some of that color out. I just don't want it to be so dark. Everything else on here is really dark. If that can have a little bit of lightness to it, um, I want it to be there. And I'm hoping that it'll look somewhat like a little bit of hair on there. Look at how look at how that is. That's kind of neat on there, right? Uh, oh, Don is here. Don, hello from Maine. Hello, Don. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you made it. Dawn has joined me on a couple of Sunday mornings on Twitch. I've painted some of my mashups over there. I should get out. I'll show you before I'm done here. I'll show you what the next mashup is that I'm working on. It's I think it's hysterical. I absolutely think it's hysterical. See, we've got a couple of toes coming across the top up here. I'm just going to put them on like that. We don't need a whole lot of toes, and we can't even see this one over here. But that just connects it through, all the way through that stick right there. Let's see. Um... I never get the Twitch notifications until it's too late. Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm not, yeah, I can't <laughs> make any excuses for Twitch. I get them similarly. Um, I will, I will have my own on and, you know, just because I like to see what everybody else is getting and sometimes I get them within a minute and sometimes I get them in six hours never quite sure how twitch does that 
but they really should clean that up a little bit. It's pretty bad. Um, I'm putting on a little dark on the side of this guy's head, and I'm going to put some right on the, the middle of his head. It's still this basic brown color, but there's a bit more of the sepia in there, and I, I'm trying to force the illusion that um, his head is round without uh, without having any other medium to do this other than um, this color. Okay, so we put some of this dark here. Got all these little hairs that stick up over there. And then we come back with some of this lighter color. I'm hoping against hope that maybe even some of this orange kind of in the Kind of in the middle, this orangey brown, that it's going to give just the color alone is going to give his his look a little dimension to it. Let's just see if that if that works that way. Kind of does. Kind of does. I need to go really light underneath his, underneath his chin over here. Okay. A little, a little bit that's running down here. But I think you can see where I'm, what I'm trying to get to with this, right? As we, as it goes around the side of his head here, you know, we get a little different look into the light. And it gets a little darker and a little darker as we go around. That definitely looks darker around his head. <laughs> Transition colors. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> uh, Bicycle Band, it's so cute. He all bats are always cute. Uh, you want him? Um, I'm, <laughs> I'm. You can have him. I don't know how we'd get him to you. Uh, let's see, a very light wash would make him pop, just not what sure color, though. Yeah, you're talking about, um, uh, Carrie, like a, a background color would really make him pop off of there. So, um, yeah, if you, the reference photo has that really light blue back there, right? And the problem is, as I see it, that... Um, you know, in order to make something pop a little bit more, typically you want to put on the opposite color, right? Well, in this instance, we don't have the opposite color because it's gray. <laughs> and because it's gray, it makes it really kind of hard to, to think about what, what color would look best in that background. I haven't, I don't think I've quite gotten it figured out quite yet. Ooh, just now, just trying to put on a little couple of little detail lines here. Right, something that might help make this set off even just a little bit more. I think a couple of lines down here. Maybe I can put like a black toenail on each of these toes. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's got black claws now, look. <laughs> you do sunset color, deep yellow to orange. My only concern is, whoop, is his head is so orangey. But uh, we could probably get away with that. We really could probably get away with that. Yellow to an orange. 
a vignette. I agree with you. You already have a neutral grit. Yeah. Right. Uh, oh, and I call the details on my... I can't... Oh. You can tell all the details on your big on your watch on the big screen. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take some of this dark color. Now, there's no reason to do this, but I'm just going to draw a couple of lines on some of his some of his bones here. And I've already got a few, but maybe um, I don't know. And I don't know if this is a this is a good idea or a bad idea. Might be a little of both. Actually, now that I've done it, I'm not sure it's the best idea. <laughs> I think what I have is I just have it too dark. Just wanted a line here and there. On there it's pretty bright but I don't want to take all that brightness away I think right it's not it's not a, a realistic look to have all that that brightness um, where his where his uh, arm where his bones are but I think it's kind of a cool look and I don't want to get rid of it but in a couple of areas, it is pretty bright. So maybe we can do a little something to, to knock that down just a touch. And I don't, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not going to do any more than that. And I've got to paint his nose. I've got to paint his nose. Let's see, I want to start his nose a little bit lighter because... As I look at his nostrils, they're really, um, his nostrils are really dark, so I can't make the rest of him quite as dark. So let's see what we can do here. This really could be the last little bit of this guy. He is pretty cute. I think maybe if we even continued that nose up here with a little bit of the dark. Like that, that might that might help it stand out a little bit more. I think it does. I think that little bit of dark there, I don't can you can you guys see that little bit of dark? on here makes his nose stand out a little bit more and now I'm gonna wait until that gets mostly dry and while while I'm waiting uh, I'm trying to think what color I mean we could do a let's do this okay we're waiting for this guy to dry So, um, a couple of different blues here. If we're going to copy, imitate their background, and I got a couple of blues, and if that was just a little too bright, I don't think I would drop any gray in. I think the gray is not helping it in this instance. I know what color gray in. I was thinking, uh, you know, a nighttime-ish dark. But I think uh, the gray to make that is not the way to go. The brushes are the King Art, right? Yes, yes, these are my King Art brushes. These are the 9020 series. I should put that down below here somewhere too. Yeah, these are the 9020 series. They're the right super pointed round brushes. 
see this is Halloween ish right I could mix up a purple ish background this is maroon and ultramarine come on ultramarine come on out there I think this is way too dark what if we just did cobalt purple in some places with cerulean that makes kind of a cool color A mix of cobalt and cerulean in there. Uh, Jacqueline, does your gray lean towards the blue? My paint's gray, like most paint's gray. It does have a blue tint to it. I hope you can see it there. And the other, it's gray, but it's neutral tint. It has somewhat of a purplish tint to it you can see the two that i use right there but i, I don't want to use i think these two grays are going to be too close to uh to the bat wing i want something totally different than his wings and so i was that's why i don't know oh i don't know <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure. Let's let's do this. Uh, let's see. Give me some of this color, just a little tiny bit. There, we've just painted a little tiny nose on him. Look, there's his nose. Just like that. Then do the opposite. Then do the opposite complement. So the opposite of that blue gray would be what an orangey color. <laughs> um, so let's see if we. Can't mix orange with that because it'll just make it grayer. But I'm, my my problem is right. The, the more we go out this way, the more yellow it gets. It's going to look like bright daytime, or it's going to be like like super garish. I think if I were going to do it, I would do cerulean. And some of the purple that's in there to give it some interest. And we've got a little purple in here already. Oh, I don't know. Let's give it a try. Let's give it a try. Let me clean off this little area. I'm going to get my big mop brush out here. My cerulean. Okay. And I think we're not using this. So let's drop in a little purple over here. This purple comes out a lot better with this big brush than it ever does with a smaller brush. Oh, how brave am I going to be? Is everything on the edge of this dry? All right, let's just do it. Let's just, let's go for it. Let's drop some of this on. And we'll just mix in some of this purple as we go. My on where you guys can see me. 
I've got little marks on my table so I don't get too far out of eyesight. So I should be able to take this all the way around. And in order to get into these tight little areas. Is everybody still here? Only sometimes I look up and I expect to see somebody going no and somebody going yes. <laughs> Get a little bit of this purple in up here somewhere. Cobalt purple is so um, so slight, anyways. I could probably put it in at about full strength, and I don't know that it would matter a whole lot. All right, all right, all right. Well, it feels it feels to me like this background is taking just as long as the whole painting. I don't know if I'm just trying to be overly careful or or what. Well, it definitely stands out. Definitely stands out, that's for sure. More purple. More purple. Where am I putting more purple at? I don't know if I can put more purple over here. That's the only place. This right here is where I would love to have had a little bit more purple, but I don't think I can get more purple in there right now because it's probably ride just a bit more than I want it to to be able to to be able to charge back in with some color and if I did that ah oh man come on smaller Michael smaller there we go more purple Well, he's definitely a creature of the night now. You love, Five Square Fairway, you love purple. He's definitely a creature of the night. He kind of has some night vibes to him, but I think even just that little bit of color really did kind of uh, pop him out a little bit. I'm going to, before I go, before we do anything, I'm going to... Uh, give him another little shot of color here on his nose. Just reconfirm where his nostrils are. Right, and I said I was going to try to put a little bit of red on his eyes. I think that would be kind of a cool thing. Maybe we can evil up his eyes a little bit. See if this will even work. 
He, defi he definitely needs a highlight on his eye. Or his eyes. His eyes, that's for sure. Ooh, you can kind of see that red on there. You can actually kind of see the red on there. Let me pick this up. Ooh, look. You can get a, just a slight red glare on there, which makes him look a bit frightening. <laughs> Yikes. He's going to get you. Oh, you just can't quite see. It really does. That, that, that mottled little background there. Yeah, I kind of like how he's popping off of there now. It's dry. He's got to dry. He's got to dry. Uh, I'm not going to do anything more with the, the, the stick here. We could give that some more texture, but I think that's fine. I'm not one to always do uh, the whole treatment on everything. I like to allow... Um, you know, your your eye will see this as, as a branch that this guy's holding on to, but because it doesn't have a lot of detail on there, um, you'll immediately go off of that onto something else, you know, onto him. So I'm kind of happy about that. So DK is here to call the love of shading on the wings. Thank you. The background gives him more dimension. Yeah. Let me do this. Let me let me mute you guys for one second so I can dry this. And we can get some highlights on his eyes here. Where is your sound? Give me one second. Can't find my... Okay, we might not be doing this. My cursor is gone. There it is. I found it. Hold on one second. All right, that should be just about enough. And now the weird thing is that we're gonna have to give him highlights on the, like on the top side of his eye, on the, on the, on the bottom of his eye, he's gonna have to get some highlights. Right there, you just get, just you just get a little bit more when you put even just the little highlights like that on there. Okay. Uh, that's what I have for you guys this evening. This is going to start off a month of Halloween-ish um, paintings, <laughs> whatever I do, whatever it is that I do on here on Wednesday nights. Uh, probably not going to do any super scary anything, uh, but I, I like bats, uh, so I want to do this bat, and we'll find some other stuff to do. I'll find some other stuff to do. I'm going to put on... The October Challenge on Twitch. Uh, I'm going to be on... I'm sorry, on Discord. I'm going to put it on Discord. I'm going to be on Twitch probably Saturday and Sunday morning, like 8 o'clock Pacific, depending upon how much gardening and yard work I have to do. <laughs> but I'll be on one of those two days. So if you catch me over there, that'd be awesome. The rest of everything is down below. Links to social, website, donations, t-shirts, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's what I've got for you guys tonight. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for making my Wednesday night enjoyable and staying around to do some painting with me. Hope to see you all back here next Wednesday. I hope it works uh doing a background <laughs> it kind of did thank you michael fantastic painting thank you thank you thank you great painting thank you um that's all i got for you guys until next week thank you again so much for joining me we will see you next week take care bye bye